Thank you. Thank you for your for your introducing me. And uh, so nice to meet you, everybody of you, and special thanks for I say this uh, opportunity to share in an international society of East Asian philosophy that actually is strictly into my topic. So um, yes, uh, uh, Federica's gallery uh, from Italy actually, but uh, based in, in Kyoto. So I teach um, Asian philosophy and Western philosophy at the Doshisha University. And actually I'm visiting researcher in philosophy at Ritsumeka University. So actually the presentation that I'm going to introduce today is a part of a project supported by Ritsumeka University Funds. <laughs> so special thanks also for that. Um, Suzuki Daizatsu, Niti Suzuki actually, and um, he's interested in uh, the Swedish mystic uh, Swedenborg. Um, in order to say to keep strictly the time, I, I decided to read the slide to go faster because if I introduce and I explain, it takes time and it's a bit, of, so I'm going to read. Um, so Suzuki Daisatsu on Swedenborg, the mysticism of the soul, an introduction. So Suzuki Taitaro Daisatsu, who adopted the spelling Daisatsu for his body's name, and was known to many in the West as D.T. Suzuki, was a scholar and author who introduced several generations of Westerners to Zen Buddhism and more broadly to Asian thought and Japanese culture. The aim of Suzuki writing and teaching was by no means limited to the subject of Zen. For example, just a moment, please, I but I do like that, okay. For example, his groundbreaking study of the Myokon In, ecstatic lay followers of the Jodo Shinsho sect of Buddhism, figured prominently in his 1944 book, Nihon Teiki and his translation of Kyogyo Shinsho by the sect founder, Shinran, was an important addition to the body of English language Baptist literature. Nonetheless, Suzuki is best known for the role he played in transmitting Zen thought to the West. Many of his Western followers refer to him as Roshi, the Zen master, though he made no such claim about this point. It was not his original intent to win Western converts to Zen, or for that matter, to explicate his doctrine from a theoretical or philosophical standpoint. What motivated him rather was the desire to share with others the wisdom he had gained from his own practice of Zen. I, maybe all of you know about it, but he practiced long time in Kamakura and he became actually a Zen master and he got Satori. So uh, his own practice of Zen in accordance with the body's vow to say or liberate all sense and beings. So basically his interesting was to, his desires were to share uh, something into spiritual, experience and mystical experience. I point out this point because actually the main um, connection with uh, the um, Svedin mystic Emanuel Svedenborg, a mystic of 18th century in Europe, uh, actually uh, was strictly into the, to the, how say, to this spiritual experience. Um, so basically, for who, for those who know about Suzuki, he is well known about his uh, dissemination of Zen Buddhism and Buddhism. But a field of investigation diligently cultivated by Suzuki and somewhat neglected in the relevant literature is his research on the Swedish mystic Emanuel Swedenborg, um, 18th century. Suzuki was a devoted admirer of the European author and considered his works a valuable point of reverence for overcoming the profound spiritual crisis widespread in Japan at the end of 19th century. Therefore, he did his utmost to make his books known by translating them into Japanese and through his writing. Suzuki research offered an original contribution to philosophy and the history of religion. 
an unprecedented interpretation of the figure of Swedenborg. Perhaps no more for Kant's criticism of his work than for his theological views. I would quote very quickly about uh, the Kant's book, uh, Dreams of a Spirit Sayer of uh, 1762, that actually was a strong criticism to Swedenborg. Uh, um, theological uh, philosophy. So why and in uh, what is the, uh, the reason that uh, Allo to, Sved to uh, Suzuki to met to discover uh, Swedenborg works? A spiritual crisis in Japan actually. So profound spiritual crisis in Japan caused by, wide, uh, by widespread materialism at the root of the significant awakening of religious and spiritual values and its connected belief and faith system. In his quest for effective ideas to answer this crisis, Suzuki moved to the United States. The stage of lively philosophical religious debate also influenced by Eastern concept. So in 1897, in 1897, at the age of 27, Suzuki traveled to the United States for the first time. At Sohan's introduction, he assisted Paul Carus and worked as an editor at the Open Card Publishing Company in Illinois. Paul Carus was a religious scholar and a representative figure of rationalist and moralist sympathizer with Buddhism. I'm quoting Yoshinaga Sensei here, 2014, author of the Gospel of Buddha and of Religion of Science. In during this not easy experience, Suzuki acquired an international perspective a remarkable fluency in the English language that, that actually allowed him later to translate the most part of Buddhist works from Japanese, from Chinese, and also from Sanskrit into in, in English. At the time, um, I'm checking time, sorry. At the time um, in, uh, in the United States, it was a very, um, Impressed came also by foundation of Theosophical Society uh, that actually um, with, between um, followers also the name of Beatrice Eskin Lane was included and Beatrice Eskin Lane later will marry with uh, Suzuki Sensei and together they back Japan and they they, they were engaged actually in a theosophical lodge and um, activity in, in Japan. So in that background, uh, uh, Suzuki discovered the Swedish mystic Emanuel Swedenborg and his work. The works of Swedenborg that are most truly in harmony with theosophy, uh, generally speaking, but especially um, the divine love and wisdom that uh, later Suzuki will translate uh, um, in Japanese, in, into Japanese. Suzuki was a great admirer of Swedenborg's theological thought and worked tirelessly to propagate its value in his own country. So he brought, Suzuki brought in some way Swedenborg thought uh, and works uh, in Japan that at the time was almost, uh, almost unknown. Almost, not, not totally. So on his return to Japan, he translated four works by Spellenburg into Japanese, Heaven and Hell in 1910, in 1914, the New, Jer the New Jerusalem, Divine Love and Wisdom, and in 1915, Divine Providence. But uh, the, fo my, the focus of, of uh, my work is uh, Two further studies that uh, uh, Suzuki wrote uh, about uh, the Spanish mystic. The first uh, published in 1913, Swedenborg, and the second one, Swedenborg, he views, sorry, his view on heaven and other power in 1924. The first work, Swedenborg, was written to introduce Swedenborg and his mystical thought at the time almost unknown in Japan. The second, to promote a more in-depth knowledge of the Swedish author of philosophical and religious theory, focusing on its similarities with Buddhism. That actually was the prevalent aspect of Suzuki research. 
in both its works, Suzuki expressed a great admiration for the Swedish author's works and the way he led his life. The, the Japanese scholar emphasized their value and highlight the impact that of Sweden was spiritual crisis, capable of marking the transition from a scientific to a mystical approach to investigate the theme of the soul. Such crisis representing a strong point of our contact with the experience of body practi practitioners, such as, as Suzuki himself. In book uh, titles, Svedenborg Suzuki wrote Emmanuel Svedenborg is a very interesting subject for investigation from a number of angles. First of all, Svedenborg said that he traveled in heaven and hell and witnessed to him the actual state of people after death. His statements are quite sincere, seem to accord well with the truth. In this world of ours, there seem to be a spiritual realm separate from that of five senses. And when we enter a certain psychological state, we apparently can communicate with that realm. Even if we think that circumstances uh, of this uh, other realm have no moral connection whatsoever to mundane world, there is a plenty that you are interested in science and philosophy. This is the second reason to examine, uh, to examine Swedenborg. Swedenborg theological doctrines greatly resemble those of Buddhism. This is the third reason that we should study Svedenborg. Just a minute, if that happen. Okay. So, when the foundation of Japanese were shaped by unrestrained materialism, Suzuki became fascinated with Svedenborg who had distinguished himself for his way of life and values against the spreading materialism of his time. The Spanish author vision and personality reinforced Suzuki's confidence in a possible solution to the spiritual crisis, significantly affecting the Japanese philosopher, and like him, a generation of young people with strong social, cultural, and spiritual awareness. Suzuki also highlights Swedenborg's scientific and religious genius, enhancing the Swedish, the Swedish author life to different and distinct phases. The first, as a talented scientist and devoted car servant, and the second as a mystic, conducting a secluded life dedicated to recording his mystical experiences. The first part of the text outlines Federenburg's academic career and commitment up to, seven, to, seven, to 1744. Suzuki describes his scientific interest and contribution carefully, examining, examining, examining the works and subjects explored in the Swedish scholar research. Such analyses focus on a topic of great interest to Suzuki, the relationship between body and soul. I'm quoting Swedenborg here, lastly of the soul, and of its state in the body. This is what the main focus research of Svedenborg in both stage of his life, scientific and mystical one. And here I'm quoting Suzuki about Svedenborg. There was not a complete division between the spiritual life of Svedenborg's later years and the intellectual life of his early years. In 1744, when he turned 56, he had an unprecedented spiritual experience and embarked on a new life. It is not that his life had no connection to the past. In one sense, it should be viewed as nothing more than an extension of that previous life. Granted, his so-called contemplation of divine may have differed from what he had anticipated, but that is inconsequential from the perspective of his entire life development. Swedenborg, try looking into the life of the divine from intellectual and analytical angles. At first, he made a careful study of chemistry, physics, and engineering. Continuing from there, he entered into biological and, anato and anatomical research. At this point, using all of his theoretical genius, he tried to penetrate the mystery of the divine, but he was not fully satisfied. And here start the point, uh, point of connection and interesting of Suzuki in Swedenborg. As a result of meditation and esoteric practice, 
esoteric practice. Swedenborg minds, I gradually grew clearer and he apparently gained the wondrous ability to enter and live the realm of the divine at will. This approach uh, will be topic of the very famous book in uh, 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 the Buddhism psychoanalysis that actually Suzuki wrote uh, in collaboration with Eric Fromm, the, the very famous psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis. So what happened in uh, Swedenborg life is a spiritual crisis that brought him in experience that we can say practically speaking, Satori, not, for, uh, not in noun, but practically speaking. So a very strong uh, and spiritual experience that changed his approach to the topic that he keep during his life, that it was relation between soul and, uh, and uh, body. Suzuki words gave great relevance to the interest and research on the soul which is Swedenborg relentlessly pursued in both stages of his life, identifying in his contact with the real, the realm of the divine, the authentic and unique experience that had divided the Spanish the mystic life into before and after. This experience had such great importance for Suzuki on account of its similarity with the Buddhist Satori. The second phase of Spellenborg, so the first one is scientific, the second one is uh, um, the mystical one. The second phase of Spellenborg life coincided with the second part of Suzuki test uh, titled Spellenborg. While describing the core of the Spanish author's mystical thought, Suzuki also outlined with greater precision the analogies to Buddhism he had ident identified. The first similarity laid in Swedenborg life path, which the Japanese scholar defined as similar to a Buddhist, emphasizing its culmination, already the transition from the proprium to the divine, from the concept of self power to that of the other power. Swedenborg theological doctrine greatly resembled to those of Buddhism. He, he told that having discarded the proprium, one must act in accordance with the works of the divine that true salvation is a harmonious unification of belief and action, and that the divine manifests itself as wisdom and love. Not depending on snow, effort, or intellect, he would become an instrument of God's revelation. It is similar to a Buddhist who believes in self-power, turning around and becoming a believer in other power. Belief in other power seems easy, but its austerities are not different from those by, re by relying on self-power. Those who spend their li lives in religious practice know this fact from personal experience. Just a moment. Okay. Another similarity with Buddhism was the assumption of providence, a divine interve intervention that provided was never accident in this concession. I'm sorry, okay. Svedemore thought that there is not a single thing in the world left to chance. And one can witness the revelation of divine wisdom and divine love even in the stroke of a pen, for it is deeply imbued with divine providence. This sort of issue attracts the interest of religious scholar and especially Buddhist. So the second uh, book that uh, it, it, it coincides with the second part of my project, is a um, concern, um, investigation, a more deeper investigation by Suzuki through about Swedenborg uh, um, uh, mystical thought, uh, focusing on the doctrine of correspondence. And uh, about this topic, Suzuki point out that, that very strong uh, um, similarities to Shingon Buddhism. So actually this is the core of the second part of my research. Um, so practically speaking, in conclusion, Swedenborg spiritual experience and soul research topic is the, uh, say the, um, uh, the main interest of uh, Suzuki in uh, Swedenborg works. And his investigation about soul body 
and similarities to the Buddhism. Mm, so, okay, it seems I could keep time. This was a very short introduction. I hope uh, I could give an uh, outside about the core. Thank you.